Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Stuff Zone channel. If you're joining me here for the first time, I am so excited to have you. Now, I haven't recorded in a while because this summer has been a whirlwind. Lots of travel, lots of weddings, lots of shenanigans, lots of wine though, which I don't mind. The big trip thus far has been to Northern France where Josh and I were celebrating a friend's wedding. We actually went out early with a big group of people and did the incredible like chateau mansion rental for the week beforehand. I've always wanted to do a trip like that and it was well worth the wait. The home itself was stunning, it had beautiful grounds and we just did lots of side trips to little French villages. Josh and I went antiquing, he got to look at bricks on the buildings and other architectural things. He seemed really happy. I found the whole time just really inspiring. I loved how the towns were so full of flowers, there were lots of little beautiful details everywhere. Everything just felt very loved and very cared for. I'm back in London right now, but actually tomorrow morning at like, unfortunately about 4 a.m., um, I'm off to Portugal and Spain for a combination of work and holiday. Obviously, summer holiday sewing is some of the best sewing, so I wanted to do a quick roundup of the projects that I've been making for all of these sunny adventures. I've really prioritized mixing up my makes this summer, so you're going to notice some trickier fabrics, there's a fair bit of pattern testing included here, and there's even a little bit of selfless sewing, which is pretty rare for me, I'm very proud of it. You'll also get to see more clips of France and the Chateau as I go through this video. Quite a lot to get through though, so let's get into it. So for our first make, actually our first two makes, we have a pattern test. I was lucky enough to pattern test the Emma Top from Silver Saga Patterns. Now, the Emma Top and Dress Pattern is a sleeveless blouse. It has wide straps, a shaped elasticated waist, and light gathering under the arms and on the straps. I really love the design here. I featured Silver Saga before in my Nordic Pattern Roundup, and the amount of subtle detail in her patterns is just really, really unusual. There are versions of similar tops which are basically just gathered rectangles, um, but she really goes the extra mile with the inset elastic. You make your own bias tape to use at the underarms, and there's lots of shaping on the pattern pieces to just make the fit really feel really custom as opposed to just a stretchy tube. I think the results speak for themselves. I love the fit of this top, and it was well worth sewing it in a bit of a finicky silk. I've shown you this fabric before. It's actually a Van Gogh silk panel from Stitch Fabrics, and I'm so, so glad I saved it for something special and was really fussy with the pattern cutting. You can see here, I think I, I really made the most of the print. You get more of the Starry Night vibes on the back, a slightly lighter color here. I'm just really happy with it. The pattern test experience was also excellent. The other testers made some gorgeous tops, some gorgeous dresses, and I can definitely see myself making another one of these for next summer. Next up, we have another pattern test, this one from Daughter Judy Patterns. Now, before I get into this, um, you'll notice that this might be looking a little ratty on the hanger. That's because I just washed it to, in order to record this video, but also so that I could pack it for my trip tomorrow. And something bled on it in the wash. There's loads of like, hot pink spots on it. I don't know if you can see. So anyway, this is still slightly damp and is going right back in the wash when I'm done with it. Hopefully I can get these spots out. Anyway, the design itself is a very loose fit shirt with a button placket. It has curved insets at the shoulder and a semi drop sleeve and cuffs. I made this in a lightweight printed linen. I bought this linen at Metro Textiles in New York and it felt like the perfect shirt to wear on these like French little village outings. The pink textured buttons I have on it were actually purchased at a haberdashery in Florence in April, and it just feels like the shirt brings together so many different trips. As a side story, um, when I was taking the photos for this, um, we were in a little French village called Valem, and we were standing outside of a closed jewelry shop, because I, you know, I don't like taking photos where I, I don't know, I'm in people's way or anything like that. There was a cat though inside that jewelry shop, and it was like furious at me, or maybe it was trying to get out, maybe it just wanted to know more about my shirt, but either way, it was pretty funny. Anyway, I've gotten loads of wear out of this. Um, I would recommend sizing down though, if you want a look that's kind of, or a fit similar to what I have. Um, the pattern has loads of ease, and I also left out some of the details on the pattern. So the original pattern comes with a tab at the back waist for you to cinch the garment in. There's an additional tab on the bottom of the button placket, and I just wanted something a bit more streamlined. The reason that I went with such a drapey linen was because I was <laughs> kind of nervous with the sort of short collar that I was going to end up looking like a priest. But uh, the other testers actually made some stunning versions in cotton. Um, they used some trims on the shoulder inset. I'm really jealous of the tiger print one. I almost bought that fabric. I know where it's from. Um, but either way, it's a great design. And I really think this one will take me nicely into autumn. So last shirt for today is shockingly a selfless sew. This shirt is McCall's 8486. And it's a very basic men's camp shirt pattern. 
Um, it's very simple as far as shorts, shirts go. There's a flat collar, there's no cuffs, the button plackets are just folded over, there's no kind of separate piece or shaping there. Um, and this one I made for Josh. Now, Josh and I have been together for nearly five years, and this is actually <laughs> the first thing I've sewn for him. I did help him make his own tote bag once. To be honest, I don't mind sewing for my friends. Um, I'm happy to be a selfless sewer, but I just always felt in my heart that I was never sewing for a man that I wasn't at least engaged to. Now that I have the ring though, there was no more excuses and I actually had a great time making this for him. It's a very basic design and again, I didn't really make any adjustments to it beyond lengthening it. Josh is pretty tall, he has a super long torso so you can see like this doesn't even really fit in frame. I can tell he really likes both the shirt and also the attention he gets when wearing something so brightly colored. I think this bold floral poplin from Fabric Godmother really suits him and it really stands out in a sea of London gray, navy and black. The flip side though of this whole experience is that now that we go to, when we go to fabric stores together, I can tell that he's looking a lot more closely. In the past, he was just kind of shuffling around holding the bag and maybe chatting to the salespeople. Uh, but now he's saying like, ooh, wouldn't, wouldn't that fabric look nice on me? What do you think? You think you can make something for me in this? So who knows, maybe I've created a monster here. I do think that I will make him a jacket sometime soon, but I've decided no knitting for him until we're married. Probably been married for like a year or two. We'll see. So, getting into dresses now. The first dress we have on deck is one that's made from one of the vintage patterns that I was gifted by my incredible subscriber a few months ago. I did an entire video on that haul of 60s and 70s patterns and I'm still loving working my way through them. The one that I have here is a vintage shirt dress pattern. And again, it's a pretty simple design. Um, I made this up in a cotton and viscose blend. The fabric is from Walthamstow Market here in London, so it was super cheap, like three pounds a meter. Um, the pattern itself actually has gathering at the waist, like hard gathering, um, with a band sewn on top of it and a front zip. That is like too much work to achieve that result, I think. So instead of using the gathering as recommended in the pattern, I just shirred on the gathering lines and saved myself a bunch of time. I really love this dress. It's kind of been my go-to like grab and go dress all summer long. It has an easy length, it's nice and stretchy. You know, you can have a picnic, you can sit down in this, you can change size in this dress and it doesn't matter. And I also think that the big collar really suits me. I like feeling like my head is on a pedestal. I can definitely see myself making another one of these and I was actually considering making one for autumn that would be made of like a lightweight denim chambray type fabric and I could do lots of denimish top stitching on it. I think that would be really cool. Next dress is something more formal, which I wore to my friend's wedding, the one in Northern France on the seaside. The wedding venue itself was so stunning and I just felt so lucky to be there. I knew it was going to merit a very special dress. I went with a modern pattern, McCall's 8507. This is one of the newer releases and I'm gonna just get a bit closer, you can see, but this is a dress that doesn't really look as good on a hanger as it does on the body. Um, and the dress has an elasticated, deep V neckline. There's also elastic in these waist channel pieces and it has either short puff sleeves or flutter sleeves. There is a sleeveless version of it. Um, I think Gina Seams made that and her version is gorgeous. Um, if you don't watch her channel, I suspect that most of you do. I will definitely link it down below. Um, I made my version in this viscose satin, which I also bought on that Florence outing back in April. And I just love the amount of movement that the finished dress has. You really do want something lightweight, but something I think with some body just holds the sleeves more nicely. You really get maximum twirl if the fabric isn't just like completely limp. In terms of pattern adjustments, the main issue here is that if you follow their recommendations for the neckline elastic, um, it's going to be very, very deep. For me, this would have gone to like my belly button basically. Um, I cinch the elastic much harder which gives this shaped appearance to the horizontal waist piece. I don't mind this at all. Um, I think it still is pretty flattering and I also think that it just adds a little bit more stability because this is anchored a lot more tightly underneath your bust. So it works for me. If I were to make this again I think that I would try and make it in something like a linen and use the longer kind of slightly puff sleeves. I think that they're either like elbow length or bracelet length. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was a really fun make. Would highly, highly recommend this pattern. Now, last but definitely not least, we have the shirt that I'm wearing right now. This is actually another modern pattern, Simplicity 9740, which is from Mimi G. Actually, the pattern's right next to me. Let me get it. You can tell there's a bunch of crap sitting there. Um, so like I said, it's a very simple kind of knit shirt dress pattern. We'll see if you're able to pick this up. I can always add photos. 
um, and it just has grown on sleeves, there's a placket, there's a fairly large collar, which of course, as I keep saying, I love. Um, I turned 33 this week, so this was my birthday dress, and I knew I wanted something that was pretty loud, really fun. I used a Ponte that I bought this summer from Selvage and Baltz, and it has this really fun, like, Italian Riviera style print on it. I think it's meant to be like a knockoff of the D&G prints. They did a few that were similar. I had a lot of fun with the pattern placement on this one, and I wanted to make sure that I was using the borders of the panel, um, the sort of more geometric shapes on both the hem and then also at this placket um, around the neckline. Not too much to say about this because it is such a simple design um, and the pattern came together just fine. If I were to make a change in my next version, I would just add a little bit more interfacing probably on both the collar and the placket. Um, but this is just more a result of using such a slippery fabric. The viscose ponte here, it is like quite almost, it doesn't feel like swimwear fabric or anything, but it's just much more slippery than a standard ponte might be. Dresses like this, which are really loud, just really feel like me, and it was the perfect type of dress to, to celebrate my birthday, and it really made me feel happy that I sew. It also kind of takes me back to 10 years ago when I was in Boston, and I was just trying like, trying so desperately to fit in in Boston, wearing like vineyard vines and lily pullets or pastel jumpers, floral shorts. There's nothing wrong with any of those, but they're definitely not me. And it's so nice now to be in my 30s and to wear what I want and to just be happy making all of my favorite garments. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed that video and thanks for sticking with me despite my absences. I can't wait to get back into a regular upload schedule. Things are really slowing down for me in autumn. I have no more weddings this year, which is crazy. I feel like I've been to a million already. Um, I have some autumn sewing plans to show you, some fabric and pattern hauls. I have like five knitted garments that I haven't ever been on the channel. And even a tutorial on embellishments or machine embellishments ready to go. It's going to be a really fun season for content, I promise you. In the meantime though, definitely let me know what your favorite summer project has been and what you're most looking forward to making come autumn. If you do want to keep up with my travels and my projects, of course subscribe here, but you should also follow me over on Instagram where I'm at the same handle, just Steph Stone. Have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll see you very soon. Bye!